Welcome to Vortex Garage and another installment of our Triumph Spitfire restoration project. Today we're going to focus on some minor sheet metal fabrication in which we're going to take a flat piece of sheet metal and we're going to bend it and form it to reproduce a part that we need to do some repair on our body here. Now there's a couple cases where this is going to be the best option for you, you know, fabricating your own stuff. Well, while we've bought some replacement body panels for this and the aftermarket has a lot of reproduction parts for a lot of cars, well, even on popular stuff, they don't reproduce everything on these cars. So there's a lot of cases where there's pieces and parts that might be damaged on your car that you need to make on your own. Second of all, there's a lot of cars that they simply don't make aftermarket panels for, and you're on your own in terms of reproducing parts for those. So this is a skill that's really good to develop and have. If you can take a piece of sheet metal and make what you need, you're going to be in really good shape. There's another big reason for that, and that's time and cost. Let's say you have a panel that's in really great shape, but it's only got a little piece that has damage. If you can repair that panel, well, you don't have to buy an expensive aftermarket piece. And second of all, if that panel's in a spot that's very difficult to properly remove, well, it can be a huge time saving to just go ahead and repair part of it. We have a great example of that. Let's take a look. So this piece right here is a backing panel that kind of separates our main floor pan section with our back section with our trunk and et cetera. If we were to look at ours, it's in really, really great shape. It's not dented, there's very little rust damage, it's really a good piece and doesn't need to come out. Now while this part is reproduced, it's not exactly cheap, and if you look at it, well this is really sandwiched in with a lot of other parts that we're not wanting to cut out, and parts that are in really good shape. So it would just be a mess to try to cut this out without having the need to do so. Well let's take a look at the damage we have. If you look, this is all really great, but we've got about three quarters of an inch on the bottom here where water must have pulled somewhere in this car's life and caused some rust damage right along the bottom. This is very common with what you're gonna see on a lot of these examples. A, a panel that's in great shape, but maybe has a little bit of section that is either got some rust damage or some dents or dings or whatever. So in this case, in all reality, all we need to replace is this tiny little section right here. So it makes no sense to replace the whole thing. But let's take a look at what we got. We've got a flange right here where our floor welds onto, and then we've got a curve that comes up here, and then we've got a flat section here. So all in all, this is a relatively simple part, but you've got a bend and a curve that you have to deal with. So what we're gonna show you today is how to take that flat piece of sheet metal, and you're gonna watch us go ahead and make one of these. Go ahead and get it welded in. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you start cutting any metal is really take a close look at what you need to repair and come up with a game plan on how you're gonna tackle it, how you're gonna fabricate the piece. Because there's multiple ways you could do this most of the time and you wanna find the simplest, most effective way. So let's take a look at what we've done here. So the first thing we did is we've gone ahead and ground away some of our epoxy sealer. We wanna find where the healthy, good metal starts. That way we know what we have to cut away and what we can keep. So here, this is all really good metal. Even here where you see the surface rust, don't worry about that. This is where that floor bracket and the trailing arm bracket were spot welded on. Anytime you have these sandwich panels and you cut them away, there's always a little bit of surface rust in between them. This will clean up super well, no structural problems. So right here is our really our only concern. So there's a couple options. The first thing I did was using a straight edge, I drew out a nice simple cut. I said, okay, don't have any damage past here, which is awesome because there's this little cutout in our lower flange here, which would be more difficult to make than just a simple piece. So I said, okay, I don't have to worry about that. So I made a cut line here and then a cut line that way. That's simple for cutting, but if you look at it, that's gonna make the part a lot harder to fabricate in one piece. And then you're kind of dealing with, well, do I make multiple pieces and mold them all together? I don't really wanna do that. So I looked at it again and, and I said, well, this is all really good metal. So I'm only really worried about the first three quarter of an inch from the bottom up. If I drew a line, which I, you can tell I freehanded and I'll have to, have to fix and clean up, and I curve it up matching this bend right here, I could actually just cut this piece away and then cut down and cut across. Now if I did that, I've got three quarters of an inch and then I've got a half inch flange. Well, that's actually a fairly simple piece to make. Now, it might look complicated, right? We're gonna take a flat piece and somehow make it bend and curve at the same time. Well, there's a couple simple tools that you can use to do that. We're gonna use a metal break and we're gonna use a shrinker stretcher set to go ahead and make those parts. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flat piece, we're gonna bend it to the 90 degree flange 
and then we're going to use the shrinker stretcher and we're going to make this curve right here. So if everything goes well, all I've got to do is cut this little piece out, fabricate this, weld it in, and we're done. So as you can see, take that time, do the analysis, don't make it harder than you have to. This should be a pretty easy part to do. I'm cheating, this is like a cooking show where I've already done some of the work. I've already done some of the measurements. I kind of did a base measurement here and I said, well, if I cut a seven and a half inch strip of sheet metal, that'll, that'll take me from here all the way to here and a little extra, you know, for cutting. And then I'm looking at about a one and a quarter inch this way. So about three quarters of an inch and a half inch, that should be just fine to do this. Now I'll probably upsize my cut a little bit, that way I can clean it up. So maybe I'll do about a one and a half inch by seven and a quarter or seven and three quarters. And then I'll have a little bit of extra material to work with. Don't wanna to do too much because you don't wanna waste your time cutting away stuff or wasting metal. So we'll draw this out on our piece of sheet metal over there. We'll cut out a little piece and then we'll start working on building our component. These are approximate, they're approximate cut lines. All right, so here's our little piece of metal that we've cut out of our big section of sheet metal. And this is what we're gonna use to go ahead and show you how to reproduce this part. And we're gonna show you how to do that with some relatively inexpensive bodywork tools. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we know that our bottom flange is about a half inch. So we're gonna to wanna to make a bend 90 degrees before we end up making the other curve. So we're gonna make a simple bend with our bend break but we wanna make sure that we have at least a half inch for our flange. Now we can go a little further, that way after we weld it on, we'll have a little extra material and we can just trim that away and then grind it down smooth and even. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and mark out on this piece. All right, so there's our bend line that we wanna go ahead and make. So here's our sheet metal break right here. What this does is goes ahead and puts bends in the sheet metal. So this is a Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive. This is, they sell some that are bench vise mounted, and then they even have one all the way up to a floor mount model. This is kind of the mid range. I think it's about 36 inches, I think it's a three foot wide. So you can do fairly large pieces with it. So the way it works is it's got this piece the metal goes underneath, you use clamps, probably want bigger ones than this, but these will work for what we're doing. You would slide your metal in. Once you get it where you want on your line, you would bend it up. This sandwiches the metal and does the bend on the brake. So pretty simple and effective. So what we're gonna do, we'll lay out our piece, get our bend line lined up with our corner. We'll lay our top piece on. Now you need to leave a little bit of a gap in the back for however thick your metal is. We're using 18 gauge, so we'll approximate that. That way it doesn't get bound up and it'll be able to make a nice tight bend. Make sure we get it straight so that our bend is straight. You know, obviously you get better tools like the floor mount one, it's permanently mounted. It's a little easier to make straight bends this one, you got a little bit of fiddly lining up to do. Use my big clamp here. What I found with these is uh, you, you can never clamp it too much. You don't want this to move as you're bending. And if you've got a tight bend to do, that can happen. All right, and then you just come take your handle. Start working your piece up. Obviously, the thicker the metal, the harder it is. And you can kind of watch. All right, that's 90 degrees right there. Simple as that. And 
And there's the first part of our piece. So the only thing that I don't really like is that it doesn't look like our bend is quite as tight as I'd like it to be. There's a slight radius on there. So there are some fixes for this. We can put it in our vise. We can put it here. We can basically hammer it a little tighter. I'm going to try to bend it again, but be a little bit tighter on our fit here. And that could have been part of the problem. I didn't, might not have put it up far enough here. Let's try. I mean, the worst case is we'll cut another piece out. So I definitely like our little metal break here, but certainly on smaller, thicker pieces of metal, it has a little bit of a tough time making a really nice sharp crease in the bend, uh, which is a bit of an issue here because we want it to match very closely that bend. Well, simple on this small piece, I put it in the vise, I used a flat body hammer, and I was able to tighten that crease up and have a nice 90 degree bend. So we're in pretty good shape to move on to the next step. All right, so before we move on, we're going to go ahead and take our part. So we're going to test fit it and see what we're working with. So I like the uh, amount of material we have here. It lines up pretty good with our rough measurement there. But on the flange piece on the bottom, we could definitely stand to remove some of the material. Now, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I cut a larger piece out than I needed, knowing I would be trimming away some material, because I'd much rather be removing material as I go along than having to add it back. So what I'll do, I've gone ahead and made a little line here and we'll draw that out. We'll cut this little strip off the bottom before we move forward, and that way we should have a lot less trimming and work to do after we install it. So let's go ahead and move on to that step, and then we'll pick up from there. All right, so we went ahead and trimmed up our piece, so let's take a look now. Oh, much better. I really like how that fits. Now, if you look at this, we've got from our straight piece of metal, we've kind of trimmed it and cut it and bent it, and now we've got a piece that'll fit right in here. But it doesn't account for this right here, and that's what we're gonna use the shrinker stretcher for. So what we need to figure out is where we wanna start to bend in our sh shrinker stretcher so that we have enough. I'm going to cut it a little close, but I've got some leeway here of about a half inch and here as well. So I should be pretty fine as long as I kind of get close to where I want to start bending. But Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with our angle tool and we're going to determine what the angle of this piece is. And I can eyeball it and tell you it's not quite 90 degrees. Um, if I were looking this way, it's past 90 degrees from this direction where we're going to be bringing in our metal. It's going to be probably somewhere around 80 degrees, it looks like. Now this tool is great, but it's a little bit weird trying to fit it up in here. And it's also weird when you go past 90 this way, you get into this kind of no zone where it skips right to 120 degrees, which is too far. So what we're going to do, here's a simple way. We know we've got 90 degrees would be straight up and down. And we know we're past that. So I can just flip the tool like this and line it up this way line the base up, line the tool like that. Just like that. And then I can look at it and say, all right, we're right around about the 10 to 15 mark. And it's tough because we got some, uh, you know, bends here and whatnot. So I'm going to go conservative and say 10 degrees. And hey, that actually happens to be an 80 degree bend up as we were talking. Or if you go this way, you're talking about 100 degrees. Uh, so 10 past 90. So give or take a little more, but again, when we use our uh, shrinker stretcher tool and we start bending, we can always keep bending. So we're gonna go conservative on our first bend, check it as we go, and if we need to bend a little more to make it perfect, we'll continue to do so. All right, let's go ahead and get that tool set up. But before we do that, let's go ahead and mark where we wanna start our curve. So if I mark 
our piece right here. It looks like our curve is going to really be, and the curve itself is really right about here. If I were to draw straight lines, you can kind of see, you know, where that curve's going to be. You know, here it starts going straight again, but it's straight at that angle. So there's not really a curve here. Remember, we're not going the full 90. So if I were to look at it down this way, right about there is where I want my bend to start. So I want my I want my radius to start right about here. And then I want it to be fairly tight. So if I were to sort of turn this around and look, it's going to really kind of go to here. So this is going to add to the challenging nature of this is that we're going to use our tool and we really want our 80 degree bend in that way to be in this section. I don't know if that was on the camera, so let me say it again. We want our 80 degree, 80 degree bend, this piece to come that way 80 degrees and we want most of the radius of the bend in this section. So this is what we know we have to work with. We're going to do our best to use the tool and figure it out. And here's the great part. If I mess this up, I'm going to go to my big piece of metal or my scrap pile. I'm going to cut another rectangle out. I'm going to bend it, and I'm going to try again. It's not a big deal. This stuff, once you've got some scrap laying around, it's practice. Practice makes perfect on this fabrication. And I don't do this every day, so I need the practice. So I'm going to see if I can knock this out and hopefully not have to do this again. But if I do, no big deal. All right, so just as we saw on our test piece and we were kind of expecting here, it's going to be quite a tall order to ask this tool to shrink this metal enough and have it do an, basically an 80 degree bend up. And we're starting to get some bend here and we're starting to develop our radius, which is perfect. And we can keep going and we'll start to, to get some, but just think about all this material that would have to shrink and bunch up to make that 80 degrees. So one way to, to remediate that and to make this easier on ourselves is we can actually remove some of that material. What I mean by that is kind of make some cuts like pie cuts and that'll allow this to bend up easier. Basically, we'll just be bending this side, bend those pie cuts together, get our radius. Once we test fit it on the piece, make sure that we're happy with the radius. We just use our welder. We stitch up the uh, cuts, grind it down. It'll look perfect and it'll work and we can make up for some of it with our shrinker. But I don't think our, sh our shrinker is not going to base, not going to get us exactly what we want. There's just too much material to work with. It's too tight of a bend. So in this particular case, if it was more of a sweeping curve, we'd be in great shape. But with this really tight, you know, very short radius bend that has to happen, this isn't exactly the right tool to make that happen. So we're going to go ahead and make some cuts in this and we'll still use this tool a little bit, but we're going to get exactly what we need here. Now, this is just the nature of metal fabrication is you use the tools at your disposal. If it doesn't seem like it's going to work for the exact application, you use another method. I got my eye protection. You got to always have full face shield eye protection for this. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but when you're using these freaking death wheels, you don't want one of those to blow apart and cut your face. It can happen. And so just like that. So as you can see, with those pie cuts, we're able to get our bend a little more. So anyway, I've made my cuts in here. And they're not quite pie cuts yet because a pie cut would be, you know, kind of going in like this and removing more metal on the outer edge. I just made straight cuts for right now. We're going to pop that in our tool and just see what we get from it. 
and then we'll make a decision if we want to cut some more. And we probably will. Okay, so you can kind of see our tools pushing everything back together here and they're starting to butt up against each other. So if this is all we wanted, this is great. It would be very easy to, to stitch weld these, but we do want to make pie cuts. As you can see, we want to come in and remove a little bit of material. So I'll come in and just come right next to these and go into the center and just trim away a little extra material because we need to get to that 80 degree mark. And uh, we're not quite there yet, so we need got quite a bit of ways to go. So this is only about what we've been able to, to come up with so far. So we'll add a little bit of pie to the pie cuts. We'll come in here and uh, hand form this a little bit and we're getting closer. But as you can kind of see, this is starting to come together with what we're going to want. All right, so here is our pie cuts. And as you can see now, we're able to get quite a bit more in terms of our radius. So let's see if that helps get where we need to go. All right. So we've tightened up our pie cuts and we're getting there, but I don't think we're quite where we need to be. So we can check with our angle tool and see. So we're probably needing another, we really need to get to about here. So we need to do a little bit more so we can either add another cut right here and right here, and that should be enough to draw it in a little more, or we can expand those pie cuts a little more. We're getting a little thin on the material there, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just make some extra slices right there, and then that'll bring it in a little more because we can start our bend here and end our bend here. So um, that should do pretty good. Let me go cut that. All right, so we've added some additional cuts and I think that's gonna get us right where we need to go. So I'm still using the shrinker because I like how it sort of pulls our pie cuts together and it's gonna make a nice tight area to weld on. Okay, so let's get this about where we want it. Look at that. That's about where we want it. All right, I'll bring the cameras over. We'll take a look and see if it works on the car. Bring this one. Okay, let's see if this is gonna do what we want. Looks like it's pretty close, but we're going to need to do a little trimming. So we're going to need to come in and remove this little piece of uh, floor right here, which is no big deal. And then we're going to want to cut our piece le level right there. So All right. Take my little face shield off there. Let's go ahead and test fit our part and see if it's going to fit up. All right, so it looks like if we bring our pie cuts in when we do the weld, then we're looking like we're pretty darn close. And uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and mark so we can cut away material here and then just go ahead and butt weld this in. Now we're obviously going to have to weld where we made our pie cuts grind that down and clean this up. But now if you look here, it's hard to see on the camera maybe, but this is a little bit deformed from when the floor was removed. So we're not able to sit completely flush against here. But when I eyeball it, our radius seems to match that pretty darn close. So it looks like our pie cuts and a little bit of work with the uh, shrinker tool, which honestly, if you didn't have a shrinker, you could probably have just done it with pie cuts, is uh, matching this radius pretty darn close. And uh, considering that this is the bottom part of the floor and uh, we don't want to have any fitment issues, I want to get this as close as possible and I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and mark up this piece with some good marks. We're going to cut it conservatively, cut it out, and then we'll clean up our pie cuts, weld them, and start butt welding this piece in, and then we'll be done.
All right, so we've got some welding magnets holding our part up. We're going to go ahead and tack it in. And the only tip I can give you here is as you're doing this, you want to line it up. If you need to cut and trim, do what you need to do, but do your best to get it completely level with the other part. And then we're going to also want to weld very slowly because too much heat is going to warp stuff. So we're just going to tack and then we'll work our way around slowly. All right, so we're going to do tacks and continue to work our way around. Now, if you're like me and you don't weld all that often, you got to fiddle, make sure you get your wire speed and your voltage right for the thickness of metal you're doing. We had our wire speed a little low when we started, cranked it up. Now our tacks are coming in perfect. So remember, practice makes perfect. And if I need to, if I'm so out of practice in welding because I've been doing other stuff with the uh, Mustang, we didn't do any welding on that, then in that particular case, I might want to take some of my scrap sheet metal and spend an afternoon just practicing, make sure I get my skills back. Otherwise, I think I'm in good enough shape to continue here. Now, there's one minor issue that I see. I've got about an eighth of an inch gap at the top there, so I think I might need to fill that. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to jump that with weld without causing a lot of problems eating through the sheet metal. So I'm going to weld the rest of it, weld our pie cuts, and we'll see what we got left with this little piece here. Worst case, we take a little shard, we tack it in, and then we grind it down and clean it up. We'll be able to fill that in. Remember, you can always add metal. So if you go too far, it's not a big deal. But this is a particular case where, as I was fitting the backside in here, I got this all really good. Even this inside corner, I got pretty good in the radius. But I went a little too far on my cut there and didn't realize it. So all in all, we're pretty good. So I'm going to continue tacking this in. And then we'll, uh, what we'll do after everything's tacked and welded, We'll uh, work on cleaning that gap up. Once that's taken care of, we'll uh, grind all our welds down and uh, see what we got left. So we're doing pretty good on our uh, stitch welding. And uh, what I'm doing right now is just getting a piece of metal that I can put in here. And uh, wow, that's going to be very thin uh, to get it in there. But I just want to get the length right, and then I'll grind it down. I think that's probably the best way to go. I don't want to just try to burn this metal with weld. I'm going to go ahead and try to hit it correct. So I think our welding is pretty much done on our pie cuts. It's certainly not the prettiest, but what we're going to do is we're going to grind all that down and see how it looks. And again, this is a good practice piece for us nonetheless. So we'll do some grinding on this. We'll get it smooth and we'll see how it looks and we'll show you as we go. All right, we're getting there. I might switch to the uh, air grinder for a little while just to have a little bit more finesse. As you can see, after grinding, we're pretty darn smooth here, feeling it with my hands. It feels really good. There's one or two small waves right around here that we can probably still work out. The good news is we can get behind it with the hammer and dolly and kind of straighten this out. 
But this piece is, is looking pretty darn good. It's nice and solid. It's using 18 gauge sheet metal and it looks pretty much factory. Our radius looks great. All of our welds and cleaning up the pie cuts look great. Um, it's flush with the piece. It's flush in the back. Um, all in all, I'd say this is a success. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and spray some weld through primer on here to protect it. And that'll make it look even better because it's going to cover in some of these grinding marks. But as you can see, in this particular case, we would have had to replace this whole panel if we wanted to have those rust holes repaired. But instead, we used some basic fabrication techniques and we were able to form our own piece, figure out how to get it in there and get it welded in, get it ground down. And that's a pretty good repair. All right, so we've gone ahead and sprayed some weld through primer on our repair. And while we've got to let that dry, I've gone ahead and picked up a piece that we cut out earlier because I can hold that next to it and we can see where we started and where we ended up. And all in all, by doing that, I would say today was definitely a success. I'm real happy with how this repair turned out. And although we showed you some special tools earlier, like our shrinker stretcher, well, remember our shrinker wasn't giving us the radius that we needed. It was the pie cuts made with a regular cutoff wheel that did the trick. Even the bending break, this is such a small piece, we could have just used a bench vise and a hammer to make the same bend. In fact, I've done that before. So we didn't really need any special tools for this, really just a basic MIG welder to burn it in and you know grinders and stuff like that to grind the welds down. Aside from that, the materials, same deal. We used a, what, a seven inch by two inch piece of 18 gauge sheet metal. Well, that's something you can often find in the scrap pile or worst case, pick up at your local hardware store really cheap. So it goes to show you that you can definitely tackle something like this with some basic tools. Now, one of the big things that I hope you saw, of course, I hope you enjoyed the video, but one thing that I hope you, you learned from it and that I learned from it, it's a constant reminder that I need, is patience is the virtue. Patience is key to something like this. You know, it's not just taking your time and planning things out, which is important, but it's having patience when you're doing the work. The minute I start to rush stuff is the minute I start to make mistakes. And it happens all the time. A good example is when I was cutting and measuring and fitting the piece in, I kind of got tired of that. I wanted that to be done. I wanted to just start welding it in. And I rushed a little bit and ended up cutting a little bit too much away up there. Not a big deal, easy fix. But it goes to show you, and it's a good reminder for me, that as I'm doing these things, if I feel that I'm starting the rush, well, that might be a good sign that I need to just step away for a minute and clear my head, come back and make sure that I'm taking my time. All in all though, very happy with this and we're in a good spot to move forward. Uh, now that we've got this repair done, we can start moving forward with fitting our floor and uh, making sure we're ready to do that. So that's kind of where we're heading next with this project. Now, you can definitely stay updated with this and many other projects here on Vortex Garage. And again, hope you enjoyed this video and hope you'll join us again for many more of this and other updates.